Recording the World commemorates and fixes it. Recording or recoding? Sometimes I think recording means the real struggle of survival is increasingly lost to us. Storm. A storm comes our way every day. And it's never the same kind of storm. Now there are storms of pixels and data. Waves. Waves of feeling pushing their ways, trying to push their ways through the oceans and currents of silences. Glaciers melt. Glaciers of history melt. The human condition. The capacity to imagine futures. <laughs> If you think of water as something with agency or subjectivity, rivers have ways of escaping their canalization. You know, there's all this all this unpredictability because we cannot control water. So there is this kind of illusion of control in, I think, in some of our understandings of so-called nature. Ne yapıyorsunuz? Şey, kendi sökmeye çalışıyorum. Niye? Böyle içinde e, ufak tohum gibi bir şey var. Onu yiyoruz biz. Ya biliyorum ben bunu çok severim. I hope people will find the same wisdom that is found in how bees conduct themselves. They demonstrate that there are certain rules in nature that uh, can transcend our imagination. It's like realizing that everything is interconnected. Los pájaros del norte de Europa pasan por aquí en su viaje a África y, y anidan y pasan parte del invierno aquí. Sobre este muro encontré un nido abandonado. Así que lo recuperé y lo guardé. Este es el nido que encontré sobre el muro. Por la forma del huevo y el tamaño parece un nido de mirlo. Así que cuando termine la obra y retire el muro, volveré a colocarlo 
en el jardín. En algún sitio seguro para que, para que vuelva a ser nido. En que ese nido esté abandonado eh, no, no está, eh, está ahí para que vengan otros futuros pájaros y vuelvan a, a tener sus crías y todo ese ciclo no se rompa. Entonces creo que hay que llegar a los sitios desde una perspectiva de, de, de observación. Las cosas se hacen con tiempo y con proceso, no lo que yo quiera. ¿no? Lo que está, está y está por algo y no hay un principio o un fin, no es una mirada cartesiana, es una mirada de relaciones y las relaciones se mantienen en el tiempo y en el espacio depende de nosotros. These little nodules, these little tumor-like formations are bacteria that came inside of the cells of the plant and the plant accepted them inside of it and then In exchange, the bacteria help it fixate the nutrients that it needs from the air into the soil, which makes the soil fertile too. So this is a very happy relationship between the plants and the bacteria becoming one together. I've been thinking a lot about materials and the imprint of our actions when we work as artists. I have become quite radical in the amount of work I make. I really have a good reason to make something. And I started embroidering with my hair and these old bed sheets. You told me we're the only animals on the planet who destroy their own habitat. Some people are more under the weather than others. We're not all in the same boat. Climate change, especially global warming, has a fascinating correlation with beetles. Dung beetles, who live and nourish themselves in cow dung, contribute to lessening the emission of methane from cow dung by aerating cow pads. Given that agriculture, particularly cattle rearing, is a major contribution to the emission of greenhouse gases, the humble dung beetle emerges as a formidable ecological warrior against climate change. It needs to be understood that insect species and populations are going extinct at an alarming rate due to global warming and climate change. There may not be many insects left by the end of our century. We are generally educated to think about survival of the fittest in terms of Darwin of competition. But we could also think about evolution as something collaborative instead of competitive, if we become aware of the relationships that we establish with each other and the impact that we have on each other. Our future is actually uh, depends political people. They have to think about the climate change. Running, 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 but not really going anywhere. We advocate individual lifestyle changes and austerity measures without addressing the dinosaur in the room, capitalism. The logic of accumulation ensures that extraction and dispossession remain the engine of human activity. Capitalism and care for the planet cannot run in tandem. Not in the long term. And the long term is getting shorter by the day. Capitalism and environment don't go together. So the A is a very difficult topic because it is all about money. 
So for me, the environment is a political statement. The Anthropocene is a slightly colonial concept in that the human has been shaped by capital and that shapes the world. Not everything should just be available to consume. We impose narratives on nature and, and I think there are ways in which nature resists and there are ways in which we are responding also to, to the environment. We're continually shaping our relation to the world. The work of artists is always to transform the way that we look at the world. And if we transform the way that we look at the world, art can allow us to think in a radically different way about who we are, give us different planetary imaginaries. Si nosotros nos vamos, Si la raza humana desaparece, la naturaleza no nos va a echar bien menos. It's easy to forget each image costs the planet something to make, to store, to reproduce, to disseminate. So how can we make each future image count? How do we make art, or anything at all really, count? <laughs>